And we're live. Good morning, everybody. It is Brother Sean Alvis. Nice to see you this morning. Man, I have another beautiful message from the Lord. Thank God, praise God, that we have an opportunity to serve the Lord again today. I'm so excited, and let's just jump right into it, okay? Um, as always, we're starting with our soul stirring songs and hymn book. Love these songs. <clears throat> and today, we're going to be singing number one, number one, Jesus, I, my cross have taken. I love this song. Uh, let's sing it loud and let's sing it for the Lord with joy in our hearts that he has given us yet another glorious day. Here we go. We're going to sing all four verses. <clears throat> Jesus, I, my cross have taken. Number one. Jesus, I my cross have taken all to leave and follow thee. Destitute, despised, forsaken, thou from hence my all shall be. Perish every fond ambition, all I've sought and hoped and known. Yet how rich is my condition, God and and heaven are still my own. Let the world despise and leave me. They have left my Savior too. Human hearts and looks deceive me. Thou art not like man untrue. And while well, thou shalt smile upon me, God of wisdom, love, and might, Foes may hate and friends may shun me. Show thy face and all is bright. Man may trouble and distress me. Twill but drive me to thy breast. Life with trials hard may press me. Heaven will bring me sweeter rest. Oh, tis not in grief to harm me. While thy love is left to me. Oh, twere not in joy to charm me, were that joy unmixed with thee. Haste thee on from grace to glory, on by faith and wing by prayer. Heaven's eternal days before thee, God's own hand shall guide thee there. Soon shall close the earth Earthly mission swift shall pass thy pilgrim days. Hope shall change to glad fruition, faith to sight and prayer to praise. Amen. Amen. Not the best at singing that song, but man, I love that song. So good. Our opening reading today is going to be in the Old Testament. Um, the uh, book of Micah. Micah, one of the old prophets um, in the Old Testament. We're going to be in chapter 6 if you want to read along in your King James Bible. Micah chapter 6, not to be confused with Malachi. Um, <clears throat> Micah chapter 6. Hold on, let me get there. <laughs> Micah chapter 6, and we're going to read the first eight verses. The Bible says, Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me, for I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and read and redeemed thee out of the house of the servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from, from Shittim and to Gilgal, that ye, may, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come with him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? 
Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? The word of the Lord. Greetings, my friends, my brothers and sisters. It's Sean Elvis. Today's message is called The Easy Way or the Hard Way. The Easy Way or the Hard Way. See, we're all on this journey of life. And, you know, sometimes life's easy. Sometimes it's not so easy. It's kind of tough. But, you know, we all have to walk this road of life. Either way, okay, whether it's easier or hard, we all have to go down this journey of life and we all have choices to make. You know, we can make good choices, hopefully we do most of the time, and sometimes we make bad choices and these choices that we make can either make life a little easier on us and make us happier or uh, they can weigh us down and make life harder and tough to get through. Friends, the opening reading that we read here in Malachi chapter 6, we read how the Israelites were upsetting God. They were not doing what God wanted them to do. They were not living right. And constantly they had to keep continually bringing sacrifices to the Lord to atone for the sins that they were committing. And God is telling the Israelites in verse 3, he says, O oh my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. God's asking them, why don't you uh, just do what is right to do in the first place? You know what's right to do. Why don't you just do it? Did I do something wrong? See, God is always good, right? It's us who fall short of the glory of God. And God's saying, what did I do to deserve our... Why aren't you guys following me? You know, haven't I been good to you, right? I sent Moses, Miriam, Aaron to you. You know, so they kept breaking the Ten Commandments or all the commandments. And because of this, they had to constantly be bringing sacrifices to atone for their sins. And friends, how many times in our lives uh, do we uh, constantly fall into the same sins over and over? And, you know, we find ourselves again and again going to the Lord saying, God, forgive me, I'm sorry. You know, nothing's new under the sun, friends. You know, for some reason, ugh, we're sinners, okay? We always seem to choose to want to do things the hard way instead of just getting it right the first time. I mean, we don't even have a good reason. God's saying, hey, what is your reason? Testify against me to do the wrong thing. Like, we don't have a good reason. I mean, I can understand maybe doing things the hard time the first time. You didn't know any better, right? But if you keep making the same mistake over and over, you know, God has to remind the Israelites, you know, hey, remember all these amazing things that I did for you? You know, that's how we need to, we need to be in our lives. We need to remember all the great things and, and really count our blessings in our life because, and, and name them one by one, just like the song goes, count your blessings, name them one by one because, you know, next time we find ourselves doing the same sin over and over and doing things the hard way, we need to stop and, and remember, you know, all the victories that God has given us and how and how great it is to serve God. A powerful, mighty God who loves us because, friends, you know, there's always two ways to look at any situation. And I don't care if that situation is a good situation, uh, if it's a bad situation, if things are going good or bad, it doesn't matter. We can look at any situation and say, well, that was a complete failure. I'm going to give up. I'm going to quit. Or we can look at a situation and say, hey, <clears throat> this one was tough. <laughs> and, and, and I want to take this opportunity to learn. And I want to improve myself and learn from my mistakes and not make that mistake again. You know, because let's face it, you know, sometimes... 
we have to learn the hard way. You know, we're not always going to do things the easy way. And, and, and if we have to learn the hard way, then at least we should learn something, right? And not make the same mistakes again. Now, if you have your King James Bible, uh, turn your Bible to Mark chapter 8. Uh, the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 8. We're going to go there next. But uh, what does it mean to pick up our cross? Okay, what does it mean? Um, you know, the song we sang in the beginning... <laughs> Jesus, I my cross have taken. What does it mean to pick up your cross and take it? You know what? Why is it important to pick up your cross? Why should we? And and you know, and does picking up our cross mean that we're doing things the easy way, or we're doing things the hard way? Is it hard to pick up the cross, or is that doing things the easy way? Let's 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 answer a few of these questions. And you know, this is definitely not a prosperity message gospel that I'm preaching today. You know. And because Jesus actually tells us that, hey, if you're going to live a holy life, if you're going to pick up your cross, you're going to do the right thing. You're going to follow God and live a holy separated life. God's going to require you to carry your cross. And that, you know, that's not going to be easy. That's going to be a burden on your shoulders. Carrying our cross is not an easy thing to do. It's work. It's work and it requires sacrifice. And, um, Anything in our lives, whatever goal we set that's worth achieving is going to require work, okay? Life, things that are good do not come easy, okay? Um, just like Jesus, he came down to this earth from heaven to achieve a goal, to pay for the sins of the whole world. He had a good goal. He said, I want to save the world. I want to save my people. That was not an easy job, friends, you know? Um, he had to suffer. He had to sacrifice. I mean... He sacrificed a throne, a kingdom in heaven to come down to this earth to be in this flesh that, you know, dies and has people treating him and beating him and crucifying him. And, you know, but let me say this. Jesus showed us that it's possible. It is possible to set your goal and achieve it. It's not impossible for us to carry our cross. Okay. Now, we might not be able to do the things that other people can do, the things that Jesus himself did, right? We can't uh, go through what Jesus went through, of course not, but and live a sinless, perfect life. But we, we do have things in our life that we can achieve. And we can live our lives holy in a way that pleases the Lord. It is possible. I mean, if it wasn't possible, Jesus wouldn't have told us to do it. And And, you know, let's read here. Let me open up my Bible in Mark chapter 8. And let's read in starting in verse uh, 34. And let's read what Jesus said. Jesus said, starting in verse 44, Mark 8. And when he had called the people unto him and his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall a profit a man if he shall gain the world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in clouds and glory of the father of the angels i'll stop there for now jesus is telling us if you want to follow me you don't have to all right i want to make that clear we don't have to follow jesus okay we could believe on the lord jesus get saved accept salvation go to heaven of course but if you want to follow Jesus, if you want to do a good work for the Lord, that's a choice. And God's going to reward us for that. He's going to pay us for that. And he says, if any want to follow me after me, you're going to have to lose your life. You're going to have to give something up in your life in order to do that. It's not going to be easy. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the world and lose his own soul? You know, but there's some people who don't want to follow Jesus. They want the world. But they're going to have a big price to pay. It could be their very own soul. Friends, the difference between there's there's a difference between believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay? You could put your faith on the Lord Jesus, be saved from sin, go to heaven. But if you want to 
be a follower of Jesus. You have to pick up your cross and follow him. You have to deny your flesh. That's a whole different story. You have to live a set apart life. Uh, follow the commandments. It's work. You know, and, and if it was easy, everybody would be out there doing it. Okay, but it's not easy, friends. A lot of people want to make excuses for why they can't do it, or they're going to lie to you and say they are doing it when really they're not. Um, but here's the thing. If Jesus didn't pick up his cross and do the work, die for us, would anybody be saved? No. There was, there was a goal to achieve, and he achieved something great having done that work, right? It was worth it in the end for him to pick up that cross. And, you know, that's how we need to focus and live in our lives. Like, hey, you know, a lot of the times I don't want to come home and read this book. I'm tired. I don't want to pray. But I know that there's a victory. There's a goal. If I do do those things, if I do the right thing, there's something of value there to have, you know? Just like if Jesus didn't suffer and die, we wouldn't have any salvation, okay? Friends, may I submit to you, if you do not pick up your cross every single day, die to yourself, deny your ungodly flesh, crucify your flesh, your sinful flesh, and choose to do what is right, you will not see any great victory in your life. You will not see any fruit. Now, does that mean you, you aren't saved? No. Okay, just like uh, uh, a rose bush, okay, may not produce roses. It may not blossom. Why? Because it may not get, be getting enough water, enough sunlight, okay? Same thing's true for us. You know, we can be a rose bush, but just not be blooming, okay? <clears throat> Maybe you're not giving yourself enough water. You're not reading the Bible enough. You're not doing the things that you need to do to grow and, and produce fruit in your life, okay? Just like when we believe on the Lord Jesus, we become a child of God, we will always be a child of God, you know, and we may not always choose to pick up our cross and do the right thing that we're supposed to do, but does that mean we're not a child of the Lord? No, we're just not doing the right thing. We're not being an obedient child. Let me tell you guys this, you know, this past week, I injured my back really bad, okay, and it hurt every single time I took a step and I tried to walk anywhere. There was a lot of pain and, you know, there were days that I just didn't even want to get out of bed. That's how much it hurt and it was painful. But you know, I, I still pushed on and I said, you know what, I need to get up, I need to exercise, I need to work because I can't just sit around and do nothing. And you know, friends, my point of saying that is this, you know, sometimes we're gonna go through struggles in our life, but those struggles are, are set there because uh, God is, is trying to help us grow. We grow through our struggles, we build character through our struggles as long as we stick with it and we don't quit and we stay resolved. You know, struggles are an opportunity for us to prove ourselves. And, and I think that's in the book of James. He said, uh, he said, I, uh, what does he say? I, I can't think of it right now, but um, he says something like, I, I delight or I, I take joy in my trials and my temptations because I can overcome them and prove my faith, prove how strong that I am, you know, because he, because if we don't quit, you know, but here's the thing, you know, we're never going to pick up our cross. We're never going to follow Jesus if we don't first believe in ourselves that it's possible to pick up that cross and follow him. You know, we have to understand that it is possible, you know, it is possible. I mean, the human, God created us very strong, stronger than a lot of the times we, we even think, you know, a lot of people think I can't do that. You know, you want me, Sean, to read the Bible every day. I'm not a reader. I don't read. You can do it. Okay. It's, it's not too much. It's never too much to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. And I, and I know you're saying, well, I've never done that before. Okay. I've never seen anybody else do that before. Listen, the world had never seen Jesus Christ do the things he did before either. They had never seen anybody turn water into wine. They had never seen anybody walk on water before. The world has never seen that. They never saw anybody physically come out of the grave after they've been dead for three days. But it happened. And let me tell you, the cross that God has for you to carry, the mission that God has set forth for you to accomplish in this lifetime, nobody else in the world can accomplish that mission but you. And the world has never seen it before. That's why God sent you here 
That's why he has you. He has a he has a mission for you to achieve in this lifetime. If you don't pick up your cross, that work's never going to get done, friends. But first, step number one is you have to believe in yourself that you can do it. Philippians chapter four verse thirteen says, uh, "I can do all things through Christ." which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Friends, we are called to do the will of God, and there is nothing that we cannot do through God. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost, okay? So it's not just us. This body you see right here, the Holy Ghost lives inside of it. And through the Holy Ghost, I can do all things. On my own power, I cannot. But through faith in God, we are capable of doing all the work that God has us to do, okay? When it says all things, it doesn't mean I can do everything. It means I can do everything that God would have me to do. My work, my cross that I need to carry, I can do that. I can do all the work that God has for me, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, the bar is set very high. God expects perfection out of us. He wants us to accomplish all the work. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is all finished. I have done everything that you have asked of me, Father. And Jesus <laughs> didn't leave one stone unturned. Um, <laughs> uh, but the bar is set high, but it is achievable. Okay, that's my point. My next point is this. You're never going to achieve that high goal of that high bar and, and, and obtain that victory if Unless you have the right motivation. If you don't have the correct motivation, eventually your motivation is going to fail you. Okay? You're going to fail. You're going to quit. Now, what was Jesus' motivation to pick up his cross and carry his cross? Well, he loved us, right? I mean, uh, before he was sent out to be crucified, Jesus prayed a prayer. Uh, you don't have to turn there, but uh, I'm going to read the prayer in Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Jesus said, Father... If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Okay, Jesus didn't particularly want to pick up his cross. Okay, what was his motivation though? He knew it was going to be painful. He knew it was going to be hard. But his motivation was, and, 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 the, and I remind you, the first and greatest commandment we have in the Bible says, Love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, and thy mind. Jesus said, look, not my will be done, but thy will be done. His motivation was to please the Lord. Okay, His motivation was to do the will of God to please the Father in heaven. Friends, let me tell you this. If our motivation is anything other in, uh, than pleasing God the Father in heaven, it's going to fail us. Okay, Our motivation cannot be to obtain material things in this life. It cannot be for the glory of ourselves. It has to be for, to please the Father in heaven. It has to be based on doing the will of the Father in heaven and loving God first and putting God first. Anything else will fail us. Okay, It may work for a while. All right? I'm not going to say it's not going to work at all. But um, the only thing that's going to sustain us in the long term is our motivation is in the right place in serving the Lord and, and, and pleasing God and doing the will of God. Like Jesus said, not my will be done, thine will be done. That was Jesus' motivation. Uh, that's my point. Because um, eventually, if you don't have that motivation, you're going to quit. And, and another thing is, the only, here's the thing. The only thing that's going to bring us true joy and happiness in this life, and, and I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul, who, who, I mean, the Apostle Paul was stoned to death. He was put in prison. He was being mocked and ridiculed and rebuked. And, and he said, I counted all joy. Or, yeah, that's what I was thinking of earlier. Counted all joy to fire, file in diverse temptations. Um, but, but, see, but see, the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, look, I am happy <laughs> in my suffering. And, and, and a lot of people think, how could you be happy suffering, Paul? The reason was is because he was serving God. His motivation was in the right place. He knew, go ahead, kill me, stone me, throw me in jail. I don't care. I'm doing the will of the Father in heaven, and I will be rewarded for this. I'm doing my work. I'm carrying my cross. He was happy. And friends, may I submit to you today that, you know, although carrying our cross is tough, it's a lot of work, it's pain, it's sweat, it's tears. 
in the long run, it's actually the easy way. It's not the hard way because we're going to eventually be rewarded for it, right? Because here's the thing. When we get saved, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a free gift. We're going to heaven. Salvation is a free gift and a free ticket to heaven paid for by the blood of Jesus. But once you believe on the Lord Jesus, you have an opportunity. You have a chance now to please God and earn rewards. You see, doing the work that God has for you, picking up your cross gives you an opportunity to, to win something, win a prize, a reward in heaven. But, you know, there's people who out there who reject the Son, reject Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you don't first put your faith in the right place in Jesus Christ, it's impossible. There is no cross for you to carry. There is no way to, to uh, please the Father in heaven. You cannot possibly do it. Now, like I said before, we need um, to believe in ourselves. Okay, first of all, that it's possible to carry our cross. A lot of people don't believe that they can do it. They think, oh, uh, uh, or, you know, and some people think, well, it's, it's easy to carry the cross. It's easy. Uh, and, and let me say this as my next point. And let me just give a quick recap, you know, first. First, we have to believe in, believe in God, right? Obviously, we have to put our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. Otherwise, it's impossible to please God. But second, we need to believe that it's possible to pick up that cross and do the work that God wants us to do. Okay, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. We have to believe that. And three, we need to have the correct motivation, okay, to keep us uh, focused on picking up that cross, okay? We can't be out there trying to please other people, trying to get rich and please ourselves. We need to carry our cross for the sole reason of pleasing God. And four, there are two ways that the devil's going to tempt us and trick us out of carrying our cross because he doesn't want us to carry our cross. He does not want us to please God. He wants to forsake God. He wants us to forsake God. So either one, we're going to be too confident in ourselves or two, we're going to be not confident enough. Okay. Let me, let me explain this. And you have to determine which type of person you are. Are you an overly confident person? You think carrying the cross is easy? You think doing God's work is easy? Or are you not confident enough and you think it's hard to do? Okay, you're going to have to figure out uh, which category you fall in. Um, uh, because here's the thing. It, uh, there's only one person, like I said, that can carry your own cross for you. So if you don't believe, if you don't believe in yourself... Nobody else is going to be able to pick up that cross for you. It's going to seem impossible for you to pick it up and 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 you know they won't believe in it. They won't believe in you either because they they can't they can't carry it. They know that it's too heavy for them. They're not going to do it, right? They're not going to pick up the Bible and read it for you, okay? You have to do it, right? So first of all, you have to believe in yourself, but here's the thing if 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 you don't, the devil's going to sense that and he's going to attack that and he's going to say, oh, you're not confident. You don't think you could do that. And he's going to drive that in. He's going to make he's going to drive that home and, and he's going to give you things in your life that will that will for, further confirm uh, that you are not capable of doing that, that you're not good enough, that you cannot possibly pick up that cross. You're weak. Oh, you, you sinned again. See, I knew you couldn't do it. That's when he brings those sins in your life. You see, I knew you weren't good enough. I knew you couldn't do it. Well, here, here, uh, he'll bring in more sin and he'll he'll tempt you and say, "Here, try this sin. Since since you can't pick up that cross, you might as well enjoy this sin, right? Um, you loser, <laughs> friends. You're not a loser, okay? And I'm not here to call anybody a loser. I'm here to boost your confidence and tell you, hey, you can do it. Through I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Right? You have the Holy Spirit inside you. God has given you all the tools that you need to pick up that cross. It's not going to be easy, but he's given it to you. You have the tools. You can please God. You can live your life a holy separated life. And you know, I don't care what stage you're at in your life. You're young, you're old, you're, you're, you're rich, you're poor, you're sick, you're whatever. Wherever you're at in life, if you still have breath in your lungs, you can pick up that cross. You can do the right thing. You can serve the Lord. You can please God. Okay? But let's say you're the other type of person, okay? Let's say you're overly confident. You think it's easy to serve the Lord. Well, friends, the devil's going to send you distractions. 
he's gonna say, oh, that cross, that's easy. It's gonna, it's always gonna be there. You can pick it up and take it tomorrow. It's no, no problem. Right now, today though, let's do this other thing, right? And he might not even tempt you with some sin that's that's totally uh, wicked on the surface, right? He might just want to distract you, you know, like uh. Uh, just go over here and do this other thing real quick and then you can pick up your cross later, okay? It'll be easy to do it later. You know, the, de the devil will just keep putting distraction after distraction in your life. You know, go ahead and take another vacation. Go have some fun. Go watch some TV. Go, go ahead and browse uh, social media again tonight. You know, you could pick up that cross tomorrow. devil will distract you if you're overly confident. Friends, we need to humble ourselves and realize we cannot do both at the same time. We're, you know, uh, we're, picking up the cross is not easy, okay? We cannot uh, enjoy the things of this world and pick up our cross and serve the Lord at the same time, okay? I mean, just look at Jesus. I mean, and, and here's the thing. Sometimes carrying our cross... And, is, is so tough that, um, and I'm not going to say that, you know, it's just it's always going to be easy because it's not. I mean, even Jesus himself couldn't carry his cross all the way to the top of the mountain, right? When Jesus was carrying his cross to be crucified, when he, uh, he couldn't carry it all the way, right? He needed help. Flip your Bible over to, uh, Mark chapter 15, Mark chapter 15. We're going to take a look real quick. And I want to, and I want to show you this, that, you know, this is the part uh, of of the story of Jesus when he's being he's about to be crucified he's 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 already been tortured he's already been beaten and mocked and and whipped and and I want you to look at Mark uh, chapter did I say chapter fifteen yeah Mark chapter fifteen and and, and just look down at verse uh, yeah just before he's crucified and in verse twenty one. Uh, The Bible says, and they and they compel one Simon, a Syrian who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander the Rufus, to bear his cross, to bear the cross of Jesus. Jesus himself needed help carrying his cross. This this Simon, he didn't particularly want to help Jesus. He wasn't one of the apostles. Um, but this Roman soldier forced him, he commanded him, he compelled him to help Jesus carry the cross up, you know. They basically said, listen, buddy, you can either do this the easy way or the hard way, right? You can either help Jesus or we're going to make your life hard if you don't do this, you know. Point is, maybe you need some, some help in your life. Maybe you need help building up your confidence to carry your cross. Maybe you've been carrying your cross for so long, you're getting, you're getting weary, you're getting, uh, weak you you know maybe you're losing motivation whatever the case is you might need to call on some reinforcements right right or maybe you're getting overly confident you think it's easy you want to put it down for a while maybe you need somebody in your life to come in and humble you a little bit and say hey bro <laughs> i see you taking all those vacations that's nice but you need to keep carrying that cross bro you need some help with that i'll help you out if, if that's what you need right um I'll do a Bible study, whatever the case is, right? Uh, but, you know, when's the last time uh, I mean, cuz when you're carrying your cross, you're doing the right thing. Eventually, you're going to get a little tired, right? And you're going to you're going to you're going to ask for a brother or somebody to help you. Hey, can I help me carry this a little bit for not the whole way? And you don't have to definitely don't have to get crucified with me, but can you just help me out a little bit, carry it a little bit? You know, that's what I'm saying. You need to reach out you know, that's part of what church is for. It gives it gives us a support system. You know, uh, uh, the the brotherhood, the sisterhood. You know, like like I said earlier, when I twisted my back and I, and I was hurt and I couldn't I couldn't it would hurt me to just move and just walk. You know, I called on my brothers and my sisters and I said, "Hey, will you pray for me? <laughs> I need help." Right? This cross is getting tough right now. My back's hurting me. It's killing me, and and I feel like putting this cross down. And I said, pray for me, please. I need help. It's okay. My point is, it's okay when you're carrying your cross to ask for a little help. Okay? Doesn't mean you have to totally quit. 
but ask for a little help. Okay, even Jesus had to get a little help for somebody to carry his cross. That that's all I'm saying here. And you know, also we need to be uh, uh, ready and prepared to help other people when they need us. Right? Don't be so wrapped up in your own life that if somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, I need a little help. I need some prayer. I need this and that." You should be able to lend a helping hand to them, right? You know? I mean, yeah, we need to care for ourselves first, but we need to care for our brothers and sisters as well, you know? Are you walking uprightly? Are you reading your Bible and praying? Because you need to be prepared to help people. And and if you're not carrying your cross and you're not doing what you need to be doing, if somebody calls on you to uh, that they need help, hey, you need the only way you're going to be prepared to help them is if you're accomplishing all your work first, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't help anybody if you're not taking care of yourself first. You need to be carrying your own cross. And, and look, because like I said, at some point, we're all going to need help. And we need to be constantly encouraging each other. You know, that's why church exists. That's why we need to uh, be reporting with one another. Hey, how, how are things going? How are you doing? You all right? You still carrying that cross? Do you need any help? Hey, good. You're good. All right. Awesome. You know, talk about your struggles. Talk about your victories. Encourage each other because we need each other, right? Like I said, even Jesus himself needed Simon to help him carry that cross for a little bit, a little bit of the ways, you know, that last mile, whatever it took, you know, um, and, you know, don't don't make fun of people who need a little help carrying their cross. And don't be afraid to ask people, hey, do you need a little help? Right? And don't be offended if people ask you. Right? Sometimes you might accept the help, sometimes not. Either way. And here's the last point I want to make, and I'm almost done. Okay? What happens after we choose to pick up our cross? Let's say we, we believe on the Lord Jesus. We believe in ourselves that it's possible. We humble ourselves to pick it up. Okay, what's in it for us, right? Uh, when we decide to please God and we're motivated by the right reasons um, and we stay humble and we do our work, we pick up our cross, we serve God with our lives, what's there to gain? Well, when we decide to do things the easy way, and I will submit to you picking up your cross is easier in the long run and we accept responsibility that's how we can bear fruit in our lives and make progress. That's how we get the victory. Look, now I know nobody wants to struggle. I don't like to struggle either. But that's exactly why we need to pick up our cross. And I know the cross is heavy. You know, serving the Lord is hard, like I said. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. It's not easy. But it's your cross. Okay? It's our cross. Nobody else has the same cross as anybody else. Okay, it's your cross and and don't think that it's all bad. It's actually good in the long run. Yeah, it's hard to pick up that cross, but in the long run, it's easier to pick up that cross than deny that cross because there's a prize to win at the end. Now, now salvation for the whole world, you know, was it worth it? Was it worth Jesus picking up that cross? Yes, because he saved the sins of the whole world, right? He suffered for three days and three nights, but now he's got a victory, a prize for all eternity. Right? And that's how we need to think of things, right? We need to understand that, you know, yeah, it might be a struggle right now to pick up the cross, but in the long run, it's going to pay off for all eternity. You see what I'm saying, friends? When, when, when you're going through something, you need to understand that this too shall come to pass. You know, just like when I hurt my back, my friends kept reminding me and telling me, don't worry, you're going to get better. It's going to be fine. Just just keep doing the right thing. Keep serving God. You're going to be better soon. It's all going to be good. In the long run, it's easier just to not quit. Keep uh, carrying your cross. You know, and friends, when things get tough, things seem hopeless, just keep carrying your cross and don't give up because in the end, you have something to win. You have a prize, a victory, a reward in heaven for all eternity waiting for you. Even like the Apostle Paul. Go ahead. Throw me in jail right now. Kill me. Doesn't matter. I have a reward in heaven for all eternity. I'm going to continue to carry my cross even when things get dark and, and, and heavy. You know, because as the old saying goes, it's always darkest right before the dawn. Okay, from my experience in life, usually right before we're about to achieve a great victory in our life and we're about to see the sunlight right over the horizon, we have a test. In a trial, God's going to test us. The devil's going to come and attack us the hardest right before we're about to cross the finish line. 
And you know there's no better feeling, friends, when you don't quit and you don't fall into that temptation and you come out the other side victorious and you keep carrying that cross and you make it the last mile and knowing that you passed the test. And here's a tip. If you fail the test, like let's say you put that cross down and you quit for a while, right? Hey, it happens, right? It's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to eventually put that cross down one day. And here's the thing, though. Get back up on the horse. Pick up that cross again. Don't beat yourself up. Don't spend time beating yourself up. Just pray to God. Ask for forgiveness. Say, I'm sorry, Lord. I put down the cross for a while. Give me the strength to keep moving, you know? Because remember, like I said, if you're still living, you still got breath in your lungs, you're still in the fight, you're still in the race, the cross is still there, you still have work to do, you still have rewards to earn. Okay, so if you dropped it, just pick it back up. Just pick it back up, wherever you're at in life, just pick up your cross. And you know, maybe you need to ask somebody to help you. Hey, will you help me pick this up for a little bit? Will you, will you help me get started? That's okay, if you have to do that, you know. Be a little humble, you know, because nobody who's carrying their cross is going to make fun of you for dropping your cross because they know how heavy it is. You know, as long as you don't completely quit and walk away and give up, people will help you. You know, people who are carrying their cross will help you because they know it's heavy and they, and they, and, and they don't want to be doing it alone. Nobody wants to be carrying that cross alone. It's always better to have a brother next to you carrying his cross and you're carrying your cross and you get to motivate each other to keep going you know the hard the hardest part my friends is deciding to pick up that cross for the first time because once you start picking it up you start walking you realize it's not so bad and then you start thinking about all the all the the prizes and the rewards that that are going to come from this and all the wasted time that you're not wasting anymore Stop focusing on all the splinters and start focusing on the end result, the victory at the end. You got to focus on the rewards. What do you have to gain? Jesus said, what shall it profit you if you gain the world and lose your own soul? Listen, we have something to gain when we pick up our cross. We're not after the world. We're after pleasing God, the Father in heaven. And you know... If any deny not himself, Jesus said, he is not worthy of me. Friends, Jesus is worthy. God is worthy to do that sacrifice and pick up that cross. He sacrificed for us first. He did the hard, the hardest cross carrying that anybody can do. Never once sinned his whole life. Never once put down that cross. Jesus said, keep my commandments for my, uh, how did he say it? Uh, Maybe I'm butchering this verse, but he said, my burden is light. My yoke is light. It's easy. It's easier to pick up that cross and follow the commandments than it is to regret not doing it later. You're going to have, you don't want to have to learn the hard way later after not picking up your cross that, hey, I should have picked up that cross, but now it's too late. I can't pick it up anymore. It's over. I don't have the chance anymore. And you're going to learn the hard way that you should have done it. It was easier if you would have just did it. It would have been a little pain, a little struggle, a little suffering back then, but it was easier in the long run. It was all worth it, right? In the long run for Jesus to pick up his cross and save us, friends, Cut those sins out of your life, right? Whatever's holding you back from not picking up your cross, cut it out. You know, pick up your Bible. Instead of picking up your phone and turning on Facebook, whatever, you know, these these little sacrifices are worth it. Picking up your cross, sharing the gospel of Jesus with your friends, your neighbors. It's worth it because here's the point. If you don't choose to pick up your cross, you're not going to see any fruit in your life. No victories. We don't want to learn the hard way. We don't want to wait until we waste our life, uh, waste the precious time God has given us. You know, we don't have forever, friends. There's a limited amount of time that we have to pick up this cross, do the work that God has for us. There's a limited number of hours and minutes in the day. And you have to spend those every waking moment serving the Lord. And it's not always easy. So we need each other. We need to uh, 
be encouraging each other, you know, don't blow your one shot that God has only to regret it later. We're going to be rewarded for it, okay? Stay focused, stay motivated. God's going to reward me for this. I'm doing the right thing. I'm pleasing the Lord, right? If you could just save one soul and see that loved one in heaven through by carrying your cross, by doing the right thing, you know, that's an eternity reward there, okay? Versus a week vacation in, in wherever you want to go. Like, yeah, you're going to have a nice vacation, but you, serving the Lord. Okay, let's pick up our cross. Let's earn those rewards in heaven. Let's earn those rewards in heaven. Um, I kind of want to skip. This message is getting long. Okay, so once we're saved, like I said, I'm going to kind of close here. Once we're saved and we have our faith in Jesus, we believe on the Lord Jesus, we have an opportunity. Okay, we have an opportunity to earn rewards in heaven. We have an opportunity to really use our lives to serve the Lord and work for the Lord and please Him and bring Him glory and honor. We have an opportunity to pick up a cross and please the Lord. And we're going to be a lot happier doing that. You know, you're a lot happier when you're when you're actually carrying that cross than when you're not believe it or not cuz i mean you might be happy for a while but eventually you're going to regret not picking up that cross not serving the lord and you're going to learn the hard way that in the end you should have just picked up the cross that was the easy actually the easy thing to do okay don't be lazy you know sometimes doing things the hard way is doing things the easy way right picking up the cross is hard but in the long run, it's the easy way, okay? And the hard way is actually the lazy way, the effortless way, okay? So friends, let's choose today to do things the easy way. Pick up our cross in our life. Let's serve God. Let's use our time to serve the Lord instead of pleasing our flesh, doing things the lazy way, taking a vacation, taking a nap. Let's use our time to pick up our cross, and do the work that God has for us. Friends, we all have a talent and an ability to serve the Lord. We all have a cross to carry. And let me say this. Every single one of you has a mission and a work to do that will please the Lord and earn rewards for all eternity and bring honor and glory to God. And But it's up to you. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can do it. And you have to be motivated for the right reasons. The right reason is what? You want to please God. You want to do the will of God the Father. And you need to make sure that you remain humble. We need to remain humble and not get overly confident in ourselves. And we need to stay humble and resist the devil's temptations because they will come. Especially right before we're about to make a big victory in our life. He's going to send distractions. He's going to send temptations our way. Because he does not want us to achieve that. And those tests and those temptations are going to come hardest right before you achieve that victory. So let's pick up our cross today, friends. That's my message for the day. Let's choose to do the eat, do things the easy way and pick up that cross today and not regret it tomorrow that we didn't do the right thing today. And, you know, let's not wait to earn, to learn things the hard way. Okay? It would have just been easier we just picked up our cross and did it today so let's say to ourselves today jesus i my cross have taken that's my message for the day guys i hope this message uh reached you well and uh in closing i'm gonna close in prayer but if you want to uh, follow along in my closing reading it's going to be from the book of jude at the end of the bible uh just one second to last book of the bible just before revelations a small uh chapter really or book if you want to call it that jude we're going to be closing there but anyway thanks for listening guys and have a wonderful day and pick up your cross and let's do it for jesus let's do it for jesus today amen let's bow in prayer dear heavenly father uh thank you for this message today thank you for everything that you've done this past week lord uh, we can't thank you enough for all that you do and um lord you healed my back uh you kept this world moving you got more soul saved um, there's so much that you've done. There's not enough time for me to 
even talked about it, Lord, but you keep us fed, you keep us clothed. We thank you so much and that you've given us all the tools, everything that we need right here to pick up our cross and to serve you is is already here and done for us, Lord. You've done the hard work. You've accomplished the hardest thing. You, you, you carried your cross and saved us. And Lord, sometimes uh, we don't believe that we can achieve anything. We don't believe in ourselves. We're not confident that we could pick up that cross and do the hard work and serve you Maybe we're ashamed of what we did in the past. Lord, please take that shame away and forgive us of our sins and let us know that you want us to continue working for you. You want us to keep moving and you and give us confidence and boldness uh, to pick up our cross and to do to do your work. And Lord, please uh, incur- uh, bring other people in our lives to encourage us to keep moving when we do decide to pick up that cross and and to not put that cross down and and to help us once in a while to maybe carry that cross for a little bit and and uh and and so we can all serve you together because it's a lot more fun to to uh serve you uh as a as a as a family as brothers and sisters than it is to serve you alone lord so please help us meet other people that are also carrying their cross um as well uh lord and remind us that uh carrying our cross isn't easy but it's, it's, it's work and it's sacrifice and too often we just want to go on a vacation and please our own flesh and, and do things uh, for the wrong reasons. And, and Lord, just help us stay focused on you and, and doing things for the, to, for the right reasons. Humble us and realize that we cannot do both. Lord, we cannot take a vacation and serve you at the same time. We can't serve God in money, you said. And <clears throat> no matter how strong or smart we are, Lord, help us just continue to focus on on doing your will for the right reasons and lord i ask that you bless this message and use this message to encourage your people to choose to do things the easy way and pick up their cross today and and i love you lord thank you for your carrying your cross and giving us the gift of everlasting life thank you for giving us an opportunity to to work and earn rewards and to serve you and and show you how thankful we are and 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 giving us this this great work to to bring you honor and glory. And uh, I, Lord, I'm just truly grateful that you're a great, amazing God. And I love you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to close in Jude. Chapter, uh, Jude chapter, chapter, the only chapter there is. <clears throat> and, and we're not going to read the whole, uh, the whole book, but we're just going to read from verse 17 to the end. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Jude, uh, verse 17, the Bible says, But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. And of and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless.